Boy, what a local government election exciting. I'm Dion Jax Miller, you're watching All Angles. And since Monday night, everyone has been asking, so who won? Both parties have been saying, me, me, I won. Well, we're going to be getting the latest on the vote counting as well as responses to criticisms of his office from the Director of Elections, Glasspool Brown. We're also going to be hearing from PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell. We did invite the JLP. Didn't get a representative, though. And then offensive comments made by the PNP's Dennis Meadows and the JLP's Everald Warmington. They've both apologized, but is that where it should end? First up, though, Director of Elections, Glasswell Brown, spoke with our producer Giovanni Dennis a little bit earlier. You may hear some noise in the background. That's coming from the PNP supporters who were celebrating outside, and that's because the KSMC, Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, is tied 20 20, but the PNP got more votes overall, so the so called popular vote. So the PNP will be selecting the person who will be the mayor. Before all of that, though, Director of Elections, Glass Paul Brown. So I'm currently at the Electoral Office of Jamaica. I'm about to speak with the Director of Elections, Glasgow Brown. Now, he's unable to join us live on the program tonight, and he only agreed to give us a five-minute interview here on All Angles. I'll try my best to get him to speak for much more than five minutes. So here we go. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Thank you, sir. Mr. Brown, there seems to be, uh, there are concerns about the way in which the votes were counted this election, the wrong declaration of Clarendon, what seems to be the confusion about who won St. Mary initially first, what went wrong with Clarendon firstly? There's no difference in counting this time around as against other elections. I think we need to understand, and the public need to understand, it goes to two process. On election night, you get what is known as the plenary count. The plenary count is what happens after the close of polling at the individual polling station, where the presiding officer, along with the indoor agents, count the ballot and then tally the votes and then pack everything in a ballot box and, and transport that to the, to the returning officer. And then what the returning officer does at the night of election, they then take all the number, transcribe the number that is on the ballot box, and they end up with what is known as the preliminary count. That was done, and the, the result was announced on the night, on Monday night, as it relates to the prayer call. Then we embarked on another phase, and this is dictated by the law. The law requires us to do a final count. The final count entails, and I think the public need to understand that what, what, what happens in a final count, and it has never taken place, and there's a narrative going around that it is slow. The final count has never been completed in Jamaica in 24 hours. So the process entails that the, the, the returning officer, in the presence of the agents at the counting center on the second day, which, is, which was Tuesday, and at times the, the agent representative is, is a battery of lawyers. What they do, they, the, return, the returning officer opens the ballot box then examine every document, most of the document in the ballot box, including the poll books, another thing, the unused ballots, etc. Et and then they begin, in most cases, a count of the ballot. What it means is that they examine every single ballot that is put in the ballot box. And at times, it, 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 the time that it takes to, to count a ballot in, in that situation, sometimes it takes longer than the norm. Because everybody is looking to see whether they, it is properly marked, if there's an issue. And therefore, sometimes it takes time. And therefore, that process has to be completed. We cannot circumvent that process in order to, to speed up the count. And therefore, it takes some time. And that's what we're going through. So uh, then, what happened in Clarendon? Clarendon, and, and, and it happens. In other words, what we remember again, on Monday night, you have a preliminary count. There are times when they begin, when they begin to do the final count, maybe there was an error in terms of the addition, etc., etc. What happened in Clarendon is that in a particular box, one of the candidates was given the wrong, the, the, was, was, was given the wrong number of votes, and therefore it, it flips around. But the person who got the highest number in that particular box 
the correct thing was that he should have gotten a lower, 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 lower figure, and that, and, and that changes the, 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 the mix or the, the, the capital. And this was in the in and town division. So which candidate in, in initially got the wrong number of votes? Like how, how did it go? Um, on which side? The, the PMP candidate got the wrong number. Which would have declared that, that candidate would, the winner? On the night, on the preliminary count night. On the preliminary count. count and night. then it was switched, switched around to therefore in the final count. The correction was made, and then the JLP candidate won, won, won that division. Okay. What happened with St. Mary? St. Mary, it, it was the, again, the, 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 the calculation and the addition that took that took place. Right, that, that caused after that count was completed, and you'll examine what was spoiled, examine what was acceptable by the returning officer. And then remember, the returning officer at, at the point of counting is, is the final person. In that, in that room that accepts what is a good ballot or what is not a good ballot. So doing those checks and those reconciliations, the numbers change, and that's what happens in, in, in the SM area. And then now we go to way out west in Hanover. Initially, we had heard 7-0 to the PNP, then we heard 6-1, and now 7-0 again to the PNP. What happened there? It happens in a sense that um, the, the, the count, and, and, and then we need to remember again, you know, when you go to a, a, a final count, you examine every ballot, so the numbers will change and they, they, will, they will fluctuate from time to time within the thing. There's nothing that says, again, as a country, you need to understand, is a primary count that, that takes place on the Monday, the night of election. And, and in doing your final checks or the final check, you, the numbers can change. Um, the key thing that the numbers change based on, on, on what is legitimate ballot. And therefore, that's what happened why you had that fluctuation in Hanover. Especially given what we're seeing now with the King's and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, I have to ask you this question. Is it the practice of the, elect of the Electoral Commission to declare uh, a municipal corporation one by one party because they got the popular vote even though the number of divisions are tied? No, we are not declaring that they, what we're declaring, you know, we are declaring a number of electoral division that, that each political party would have won in the election. In terms of who take control of the municipality, the law is clear. If you read, if you read the seventy um, eight of 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 of, of the Europa, it clearly outlines what happened whenever there's a tie. Whenever there's a tie, the party with the the popular vote will automatically um, takes charge of the mirror seat in that electoral division. Uh, and and just for regular parlance of the average man can understand would uh, would the electoral commission consider that cooperation won by the party who has the popular vote it's not a matter the electoral commission consider it the law clearly defines the process what happens when there's a when there's a tie and therefore it's not a matter of accepting or not accepting the law says whenever there's a tie the person who takes over the chairmanship of that municipality the, is, is a party that, that, that has the popular vote, the majority of the popular vote. The general secretaries of both the JLP and the PNP speaking to Dion Jackson Miller on Beyond the Headlines yesterday mm. uh, said that their confidence in the EOJ remains. Uh, we've seen some people on social media, however, raising concerns about the integrity of the electoral office this time around. Can I respond to some of those concerns? Um, we work hard here. Uh, I think people need to understand the process. I think I think some of the comments is you look at the comments. I think when we, 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 we some members of people don't understand the process and therefore they are able to pass certain comments. But certainly we 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 we, we ensure how we do whatever we do as dictated by the law. I will never resign from that. We're not gonna do anything that is that is not dictated to us by the law. Um, and you can and one of one of the major body which we rely upon here. Is a cafe, the observer grouping. And we have always been in the house by the, the observer grouping. And cafe came out despite some, some issues that they had. They came out and endorsed the election itself. And they did say this election was, was, was fair and transparent based on the observation of the activities that took place in the election. Yeah, as you mentioned, cafe, I'm happy you brought them up. That's the citizens' action for free and fair elections. Okay. No, they raised concerns. The head raised concerns yesterday as well and beyond the headlines and even 
on the day of the election, saying that in about 11% of the polling stations, observers weren't allowed to observe throughout the day. They were given specific time periods and they had uh, serious concerns about that, which brought into question the issue of training of your election day workers. How do you respond to some of those concerns that ele electoral workers weren't properly trained, which saw pretty much one in 10, more than one in 10 uh, polling station not allowing the uh, cafe observers to do their jobs? And we do, we, we do, that's part of our training. We, do, um, we, 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 and, and we do train them in terms of the rights of the observer. And it's an arrangement that we have, and it's an understanding that they should be allowed to free access, certainly to our police station, because at the end of the day, we want their, their stamp of approval in terms of what we do. Um, we, we, coming out of that exercise, or coming out of the issues that took place on, on, on Monday, I've had a discussion with the chairman of CAFE, uh, Ms. Baston, in, in fact, I, had I, had I have also apologized on behalf of the Commission and, and the Electoral Office in terms of what happened. There is a scheduled meeting sometime next week between myself and Ms. Baston and her team. And we're going to look at how, how best uh, what we need to do, not to have a repeat of what took place on Monday. In terms of some of the numbers coming out, the actual voting on the net, there were concerns, widespread concerns about how slow it was. What do you attribute that to? There are some issues in time. We, we, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a report. There are some technical technological issues, but there are some issues outside of that. If, it, if, if you, what, what was brought to my attention, and, we, and I, I said before, I read a report, is that there, for example, in the, in, in Hanover, West Poland, and St. James, there's a significant amount of rain, et cetera. So it took some time for the, the boxes to be brought into the pool, into the counting center. And that also impacted in, uh, uh, um, on, on the speed at which the result came out. But suffice to say, by, by, by about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, um, the country was aware in terms of the really rich way it was trending. There were concerns that essentially that the EOJ sold the results to media and there are some people calling for that to stop because they felt that the results weren't being released mm -hmm. in a timely manner to the public. How do you respond to those concerns mm -hmm. that EOJ were s sold the results to the media essentially and no, for no, them no, to do... Well, well no matter selling the, the, the data to, to some media house. That issue, as I said, we are looking at that issue. We look did our report. We're gonna do, do a review. Certainly, we, when we do the review of this election, I think some prior discussion I've had with our chairman. We're looking to see if, um, how best to address that matter that is in there in the, in the public domain. But, but you'll, you'll you'll get a response from us shortly in terms of the approach we'll take going forward. You. Uh you mean you addressed the issue of cafe, but there were concerns from the media as well about uh, them being allowed to observe. I remember speaking with my colleague from the Gleaner, Erica Virtue, who raised concerns. Where are some of the concerns that some uh, media person were expressing? Right. Um, well, we have sought in the past. I think we had a MOU between us and the, and the Press Association of Jamaica. Um, so there were some issues there. Um, it is a matter of us reinforcing to our people certain terms of and some of those issues that she might have had or the individual might have had would have come from more from the external people to the to, 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 to our operation but but what we have sought to do is to have that sort of mou in place to govern the activity of the media because we want the media to 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 ensure as part of the observer pool to, 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 to monitor what is happening and then report to the wider public in terms of our performance and activity on a day. So we, 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 we continue to look at that, how best we can, we can address that situation so that we don't have a repeat going forward. Any concerns expressed to you by any other political parties? Nothing that was brought to my attention. Certainly on the day, on Monday, we set up what is known as the election center, which is a, which is a, a grouping of persons, including critical stakeholders, that is the police, the army, the political party, the main political, registered political party, the church, the broadcasting commission, cafe, NIA. And within that, that grouping on the Monday, we, we receive a number of complaints, number of queries, etc. Nothing came to us on the day from any political party. Okay. And, and subsequent to that? So I've, I've, I've not had, I've not seen any, 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 any report or anything that's been sent to us since then. What's the current status of the results? Can you give us the latest update? We continue to count. I think up to a short while ago, we are close to 170 divisions have been completed. We're going to continue to count in the course of the night. We want to try as best as possible to, 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 to see how far we can get. 
there will be a few that will be going beyond tonight into Thursday morning. Uh, and so, sorry, it's, it's 170 of 228 28. divisions. Yeah, we have, we have completed a few div, um, divisions for the mayoral, for the Portmore mayoral election. I think we have done about four or five out of those. Okay. In terms of what's next for the next election, um, in terms of how the EOJ operates, what different will you do for the next election? Any changes at all? Well, the, the, what, what happens and what will happen as soon as we are able to complete some, 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 it, um, some of the activities to, 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 to finalize this election, we're going to sit down, we're going to review certainly the different stakeholders, as I said before. There will be a meeting with Cafe next week to look at that aspect of it. We're going to sit down with, with, the, with the JDF, the JCF to look at what the, the issues. Uh, we, we, so it will be an extensive review will take place. Um, certainly we want to address some of those issues that we have a repeat coming um, whenever the next election is, is held. Anything else you'd like to add that you think is important to share that I did not ask or forgot to ask that you think is important to share? Um, just to say to the public, to, 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 uh, we, we, we're going to try and do it from our end for the public to understand better the process. I think if the public is able to understand the, the process in terms of accounting, etc., you get a better feel, and you may may have that. You may, may, may most likely reduce the sort of negative com comments that we see on the social media platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to embark on that. Um, just to say that we just want from our end is to thank the public and the Jamaican electorate and the 30,000 persons who assisted us on election day in executing that election on Monday. Thank you so much, Giovanni, and stay tuned. When we come back after the break, we're going to be hearing from the General Secretary of the People's National Party, Dayton Campbell. Stay tuned. We'll soon come. <laughs> 